when I look at a lot of the turmoil in the Western world, um, a, lo a lot of people seem to be desperately seeking meaning to me. And, and, and you see that um, play out in the, the sudden passion for politics, for certain groups, for certain ideas. There's so much zealousness um, that comes with, with these ideas that, that people have, for the most part, just picked up. I mean, like I have, um, you know, friends or whatever that I've known for a very long time that never really had much of an interest in politics or anything like that, but then very much grew to that becoming an almost an all encompassing worldview. So it's like, what's going on there? And there's an argument that it's not actually that healthy for a society to have its citizens being so over involved in daily politics like that, that it actually indicates that perhaps there's something wrong in the culture at large or in the political system. But, um, could I, I ask think a question? Oh. Um, that isn't, I mean, you don't have to be specific to your friend, but you made the claim there that said, you know, um, being so involved in politics. And I agree with you that it's not healthy, whatever's going on right now. But I actually don't believe that people are, are involved in politics. I think they're caught up in this kind of weird maelstrom of just media about politics. So my question yeah. would be uh, about your particular friend. Can Have they actually um, accomplished any sort of political act? No. Have they done? Right. So no, they're I can just... stop you right there. <laughs> yeah. I understand what you're saying. And the, you're, it's good to point out the word involved there because there is an assumption made with that word that is... Uh, a fallacy. I would not say that one is involved in politics just by way of consuming political media and holding political opinions. On the contrary, that seems to me to be the most corrosive kind of involvement in politics because it's a kind of impotent involvement, right? It's passive. So that's actually what I mean. I would what what would you what would be a better word for that than a preoccupation, perhaps? Well, I think that it's it may point to something, which is if you were in a in a position of power or a politician, wouldn't that be what you would want the population to do? To think that they're involved, but actually all they're doing is just yelling at each other. <laughs> you know, it's not actual. And not to say there aren't people that do. Yeah, Some people yeah. do take actual action, actual action. Some people, <laughs> you know, at the most simple way, voting, whatever. But I mean, you know, this whole claim that everybody's involved in politics is not exactly right. Everyone's That's obsessed with being a, in, in a party or, or on a side right now. Yeah. And it's, it isn't even involvement to me. It, yeah. I mean, anybody can hold an opinion, right? That's essentially what we're starting to to identify doing politics with is simply holding an opinion and then levying that opinion at others. That's may, an act of involvement, which I think is flawed. Maybe the most radical political act a person can have right now is having no opinion. And, I, and if you yeah. think that's and I'm just saying things, you know, maybe that's not real. But here's it is funny because. Um, someone comes at you with, you know, some sort of claim or political opinion, they don't like it much when you say, well, I don't really know, or I'm not really that sure. And that's also not something mm -hmm. I'm interested in. Tell somebody you're just simply not that interested in that. And you you will often see the fire and the fury. But anyway, I, I hate to sully um, the seventh seal, which is such a, a, a beautiful, special film with this talk of uh, the mundane I know, but the thing is, um, there is something that is sullying about seeking meaning in such mundane uh, realms. And, and that's what I, I see this movie rekindles a desire for me every time I watch it for something deeper, something realer, something tangible, something more alive than opinions, than daily media, whatever it is. And, um, and, and, and I think that we all have that desire, that desire for something that, that gives life to our life. You know, I mean, imagine in some ways, I wonder if you kind of just put everything that you filled your life up with aside and you just 
sat around for a day you know who even does that anymore i don't do that but no one has time to do that but we fill our life up with so much but especially to me what is the most jarring realization is that because we're so connected constantly and we can be connected when we're driving when we're showering i can listen to a podcast when i'm in an elevator i can look at my phone you have so few of those moments where you have stillness and 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 silence with your own thoughts that i think that it's da- there's a dangerous um trap where you can get caught filling your life up with the mundane and never taking enough of a pause to realize how overwhelmingly mundane and hollow those things are and um I mean, it keeps you fucking busy. It keeps you busy. Like every time I look at my phone, I'm like, oh, there's a new storm going on. There's a new thing to have opinions on. There's a new problem. There's never a time I look at my phone and it's like, ah, nothing's happening. Okay. You know, I've not watched the, I've not, I have not opened a news site on my phone for almost four months now. I made a decision at the beginning of the summer to no longer use my phone to consume news. Okay, and wait I simply a didn't do it. Mm-hmm. But I say, you say a news site. I'm not opening websites. I'm looking at Twitter and, and Well, that's a Instagram. whole nother, right. That's a whole nother have to realm look at of. the fucking actual news. That's the problem. You know, it's like you don't even have to be actively looking for things. If you open social media, it, it inundates you with that same news, except it's worse because it's usually like short form, right? Instead of reading an article or something a little more longer form, if you're going to an actual news website, you're getting like just a bunch of headlines and quotes and secondhand opinions to something. And that's how you find out that something's wrong again. So I don't know. We, we do want to get out of the, this mundane area. But my point in bringing this up is that I think it's a sad thing because I think the West suffers from... I I think the West suffers from the dangers of individuality and freedom. I think that it's very clear, as with everything, that there are risks to it. And you can fall victim to those risks if they're not mitigated. And the risk to an individualistic culture is that people struggle to find their own path, their own They've struggled to define their themselves and their lives, which is something that culture used to do for you largely or whatever, you know, uh, more collectivist society you were in or even a collectivist, um, like a government that's more overhanded that says, this is what we do. You know, there's not a lot of a uh, choice in, in, in how you're going to define your life or whatnot. When you have all this this freedom to choose so much about your life, which is something we talk about in the Escape from Freedom Library Circus episodes, that freedom creates a lot of insecurity and a lot of desperation to find meaning wherever you can get it as fast as you can get it. And so I think we just kind of take these short form uh, distractions and and little little hits of meaning, right? Like a little, I mean, what is dopamine, I guess, but a little hit of a sense that you have some meaning, some life. Because, right, doesn't that that sense of, like, that little rush of dopamine f- make you feel a little bit alive, right? I mean, the weirdest thing is, like, when I look at my phone or when I'm doing some kind of escapist, uh, escapist activity of, of, like, hedonistic pleasure, I'm eating a donut, whatever, there's a moment there where I'm totally in that thing. And that's, in a way, it's it's the parallel to the kind of um, peace and stillness that comes from like the peak of meditating where you've reduced yourself, right? You're so into the thing you're doing <laughs> that you definitely not true. dissolve. No, listen. Eating a donut is not oh the same as the God. peak of meditation. And no. also, you've destroyed your brain by watching tri- Twitter too much. Watching Twitter. That's how an old person would yeah, say Yeah, exactly. It. You're watching the Twitter too much. Listen. <laughs> no, listen. shut up. Let me finish. <laughs> no, look, okay, shut yeah, up. get your dopamine hit by talking about God. Go no, it. I'm saying because the thing is, when you finish meditating, though, you actually feel really good and balanced and refreshed and, and and you enlightened, your perspective is widened. When you finish the donut, when you finish looking at Twitter, you're left with this sense of hollowness. 
And this sense of like, I need more, you know, I immediately need to fill the void of whatever that thing was just filling. And now I stop. I put my phone down. It's crazy to me when I use my phone and then I stop using it. It's so it, it it leaves this after effect on me and I don't even use my phone that much I use it to pose scroll a little bit and go on but like I can feel the way it leaves me like no 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 I want to get back pl- I want to get plugged back into that escapist realm and so I think that that's a really dangerous tool because it numbs you to the realization that you don't have that genuine meaning in life. It allows you to get away from having to deal with that lack of meaning for way longer than you would if you had to be alone, quiet, in stillness more because it's hard to escape, you know, that sense of of existential dread when you're just sitting there with it. 